Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for spending the day with Mapbox. And especially thank you, given this is, I believe, the last session of the day and, and uh, spending time with me. I understand that you've heard a lot of use cases and a lot of our customers and partners talking about Mapbox and mapping. For the next 15 minutes or so, I'd like to switch the gears a little bit and think about technology and future of mapping. OK, so what is the future of mapping? Right? As we all have seen paper maps from the day when we're five years old and watching uh, folks drive. And uh, for some of us, remember buying the library of maps from Costco. Right? Those days are beyond us. But what is the future of mapping? So the, when I think about a map today, I think about an iceberg. What you see above the line is rendering of the map, the styling, the data, and the information on top of the map, the ability to zoom in and zoom out. They're all very fantastic. But what really gets me going is what's below the watermark, the 90% related to mapping that is data driven. Today, mapping is 90% data. When I say 90%, I'm talking about the effort, the value, and uh, what do we mean by data? So let's first take a look at a little bit of progression of mapping. Digitize of, digitization of maps has happened decades ago. Moved from Thompson maps to ones and zeros. After that, there was image processing. The day that any satellite was launched, there is already imagery being downloaded, and there's processing of that. And the many vendors in the market have already conquered the problem of mapping it, uh, lo that long matching and layering. Those are what we've done so far. Looking ahead, when we're talking about the living map, we're talking about co collecting live telemetry and data processing in real time to make the ever-changing map that you know, the ever-changing world reflecting on your maps. We're talking about daily rapid upgate, uh, uh, updates on a global scale. We're talking about ground truth, 3D, right? What you see, be able to capture it, categorize it, and then ultimately uh, enable autonomous driving. And we're talking about applying machine learning algorithms to the data that's collected, the data that you see. So that also means the kind of data we're working with is changing. From the days of sort of relational uh, 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 Oracle spatial days of uh, storing data in GIS databases, we have also heavy data, that's what I call imagery data, of uh, processing, digitizing that. But more and more, we're talking about big data processing. We're talking about gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes of data that may coming from maps or may come from heavy imagery. We're talking about live data processing, collecting information on the ground, immediately send it back and feed it back to the customer. And then more and more we're talking about visual vision data on the ground. So if you look at these images, they look very familiar, right? We're in a mapping conference. So undoubtedly, you look at styles, you look at the different findings. So the bottom I believe is a, a mapping of suburbs. But if you think about it, that all three have the commonality of so looking from top down. The future of the mapping is not just top down, but at the ground truth level. So keep that in mind for a second. In Mapbox, we're taking the data processing extremely seriously, because at the end of the day, we want to provide customers with a highly updated living map. So what is it that we do behind the scenes to provide that living map. We have a lot of sources from open source or proprietary data sources that we conflate into multiple databases. We have automated and manual, mostly automated, 90 plus percent, of looking at errors and things we want to correct. And we enhance them by putting points of interest, addresses, and important information onto multiple layers. I'm sure you've heard a lot about that today already. And we're tiling the, those uh, uh, maps to serve it through APIs to you all, okay? And then what's remarkable is this process is ongoing every day. 
At the worst, our SLA is seven days of getting the changes into our mapping in a in an emergency situation could easily do it within a day. So if you think about the world of annual updates to the paper map or quarterly, even monthly updates to digital maps, when you're talking about daily changes as buildings get built, roads get created, street names get changed, uh, points of interest get you know, come and go, restaurants, cafes, all of that gets updated on a daily basis. This is the major data pipeline. That means conflating variety of data sources, coming to variety of data formats, and then somehow at the end, providing customers with beautiful laid out map. Okay. So what I'd like to do is show you guys a video of what's, what we are working on. This is our vision SDK. This is the SDK that we are embedding into our customers' phones. Okay. As you can see, this SDK can allow first assisted augmented driving to alert the driver. Secondly, it has the ability to recognize and capture images. Those images could be street signs, speed limits, turn lanes, okay, and even particular stores. And that image, as you can see, the car is constantly capturing. And then we have the ability at the edge on the phone to do the neural network work of identifying and segmentation. Okay? And then those images get sent back to Mapbox, and we do massive amount of image recognition and massive amount of deduping. Right? Over, so a, a lot of processing, you can see that 25 miles an hour speed limit on the neighborhood road. Over the last few months, we have done tons of image processing and we have already identified over a million images across North America in the United States. So you can see, right, one of the things that oftentimes I tell my friends that they're surprised is, what do you mean? There is no central database somewhere in the government that I can query for speed limits, right? When I see 55 on I-95, that information has got to be somewhere. Otherwise, how would they know what's the number to put on the street? So surprisingly, there isn't, maybe with the exception of interstate, certainly during secondary tertiary neighborhood roads. So if you are someone driving down and you would like to find out how, whether you're breaking the speed limit or not, or perhaps your insurance company to make sure a logistics company's uh, population of drivers drive safely, this speed limit information is very important to you. And because there's no centralized government database to get all of that, the best alternative people are doing is ground truth capturing. Okay, literally drive down the street and capture the signs. But the issue is that's very, very expensive. You rely on one company driving around, no matter how many thousands of lighter cars, you're never gonna cover all of the neighborhoods. So this is where a new approach is needed. Our vision SDK, what I just showed, will be embedded in many, many, many people's uh, apps and then it becomes a bit of a social gathering of images and Mapbox can take the centralizing processing deduping role, ultimately give everybody a map of all the streets along with speed limits attached to them. So those are the kind of data processing uh, 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 work that we can do that can help move the maps to the next stage. Second thing is the idea of mapping states and counties and cities and zip codes sort of as a visualization layer, again, is something that many of you guys are doing it today. Not surprising. GIS has been around for a long time, right? But the question is, what else can we do above and beyond that? So we have a product called Enterprise Boundaries. Today is uh, very typical in terms of allowing business intelligence use cases, that's what we call it, mapping your sales, mapping your population, mapping your citizenry into zip codes and uh, counties, well uh, defined. But the question is things like neighborhoods, right? It's a morphous idea. Do you live in neighborhood A or neighborhood B? And the neighborhoods change over time. But that's also very useful for variety of purposes to identify neighborhoods. Then how do you actually visualize that and that becomes of sort of different shades and different level of confidence level. So those are kind of things that we want to take 
above and beyond sort of mapping directly to zip codes into uh, uh, visualizing nebulous concepts like that. And then lastly, on buildings, right? So there's actually quite a lot of open source buildings data out there, not just the address, but the height, the year was built, et cetera. So we want to allow customers first to visualize 3D buildings, and second, to provide much, much more info, in, interesting information. I think two speakers before me was a lady from Microsoft who talked about wireless broadband uh, adoption. We are actually working with a telecommunication vendor who, with our help, can map Wi-Fi upload and download speed down to individual buildings, right? So then they can be very targeted understanding when the customer calls up to say, I paid for 50 megs download and whatever, 25 megs upload. Why is it so much slower, right? And they can understand triaging where is the bottleneck and what is the actual experience by every single customer in every single building. So these use cases are really endless once you have much better detailed understanding of your buildings and of your maps. Again, all of them is a data conflation, data processing exercise. Okay. Lastly, I talked about telemetry earlier, right? So today, everybody, anywhere you drive, you put in the address and you accept, expect the ETA, ex uh, expected time arrival. How is that calculated? How does that, you know, the, whatever app you're using, get that information? So the magic behind that is understanding traffic and understanding the conditions on the road, whether congestion, road closures, incidents, and then getting information about how fast the traffic's moving and how, uh, how the uh, uh, data is, uh, how the uh, uh, map is working. Sort of, uh, is it flow traffic or is there a lot of, uh, in this case, uh, New York, you can see the green is easy traffic and then red is blocked. But more interestingly is that if we are understanding where people are traveling, the ability to discover undiscovered paths, so in this case, we got probe data from people anonymously traveling through Santa Cruz Mountains, right? And that particular path the road was not on the original map. And then with a lot of data, we can process and provide expected time of arrival. So again, that goes into a data collection data pipeline. So every day, Mapbox, I think Eric must have talked about over 500 million uh, monthly active users that are using Mapbox. Other sort of uh, data points that I'm very proud of is every day we collect billions of anonymized probes as people go about their lives. And then we, every day, we can put that together, tracing that, all those probes together, to close to 300 million miles of live traffic information. And all of that information going through our data processing and data machine learning algorithm pipeline on a live basis. Every five minutes, anywhere in the world, I can give you red, yellow, green in terms of traffic situation and what's going on on the map. And that is what I really call the living map, and this is where the future of mapping is headed. So as a summary, back to the iceberg, I think to be a fully uh, advanced provider of mapping in the future, it needs to be some company that really understands data, processing, collecting, anonymizing, and building machine learning algorithms on top of data. That's all I had. Thank you.